Hey everyone, it's Nadia from Leah D Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we are <laughs> looking forward to the holidays. So I know it's literally just turned September, <laughs> but um, I wanted to show you guys this really cute idea that I had for what could be Christmas ornaments or holiday ornaments or decorations. And it's a little bit different than I think the typical, but I wanted to show you guys and, let, and you can let me know what you think. What I have, and if you've been following me for a while, you recognize these shapes because this is a mold that I got from, I think it's called we sorry, West Ridge Arts. And it's a mold that you just easily pour. And uh, once you take them out, then we can add designs to them. Now, last year, if you've been following me for a while, I did have the exact same mold. So this one here, um, but, and I made ornaments with them as well, but I used washi tape that was a strip that went across like this. And then I kind of added some designs to it. I'll uh, see if I can find a, a thumbnail to stick in the corner here to show you guys. But basically, um, that's what I created last year with this shape and this mold. But, uh, and it actually ended up being really popular. I was actually not, I was actually really surprised how popular they were. But, um, so this year I wanted to kind of do something a little bit different because I love the shape of this mold. So I wanted to see what else I can do. So I'm combining a new product that I recently received, which I also love, and I wanna see how they're gonna to work together. So the new product that I have is another product from the washi tape shop, and it's these flowers here, and it's on a roll. And look how pretty this is. And it's clear, look at that. I mean, normally washi tape, is not clear. Normally it is has normally like a white background or it's just a full color background, but this one is clear. So I think it has a lot of possibilities. And actually um, the white, this is the clear one. There is actually a white one as well. Same designs, and but it has the, the opaque white background. So there is that option too, if you want the white background. But um, I was just so excited to get this clear one because I just think, it has so many possibilities in resin. So, and you guys know I've been working, I've been kind of testing out stickers on resin lately. And uh, so this is gonna be another test. So this is what we have. And um, it's just a long strip, so you will have to cut out any of the flowers or elements that you want from it, which I've kind of already done. I've just kind of used my scissors and roughly chopped out some of the flowers that I wanna use. So I have this, oops, so I have this one here. And I have a few others. So I have this one and this one. And uh, like there's a bunch of designs. Some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. But um, so yeah, so we have a bunch. But uh, so what you're gonna do now is obviously this is a super simple, super, super simple technique. And I think it's actually gonna be really, really cute. But so what we're gonna do is we, we just chop the sections that we want out of the, t the roll of tape here. And then we'll just need to trim closely around. And uh, you can use just regular scissors for this. You can use an X-Acto knife if you want to. I find the scissors, at least for me in this case, I'm just, I'm faster with the scissors here for this one. And uh, because it's just clear tape, like it cuts really easily. So we'll just quickly Go around here. And I know fl these flowers are a little bit more pastel spring-like, but I thought why not try it, you know, and see how they look on this, uh, on these, on this shape, this ornament type shape. So just to see, it could be something a little different because I know pastels are really trending uh, the last few years. These colorful pastels have been trending for trees. There's been a lot of people getting white, um, Christmas trees or pink Christmas trees. So I thought these could be really cute for that. I've even seen light blue, like baby blue Christmas trees. So, and then we would just take that and I'm gonna have to get my tweezers. Let's grab that. Get our tweezers to pull that out like so. And put it on like that and look at that look how cute that looks 
All right, so let's try another one. So this is, we'll try the, this one on the pink. And I like how that is looking there too. So let's do that one really quick. So now let me know in the comments, what do you guys, um, what kind of themes do you guys think are coming up for this holiday season? Like, um, like I said, I know that the last few years pink has been and like the pastels have been popular. And some years the, um, like actually my Christmas tree is, well, it's kind of more of a, like a heritage tree at this point because every year we just add more and more ornaments that you know my kids choose or things like that but ours is our tree is really colorful like it has a lot of as you would expect because i you know i love these bold colors and especially the colors like the golds and the the dark pinks and the purples i have a, actually have a lot of that on my tree uh, we have like a, some candy themed ornaments like we have a lot of you know, really colorful. But uh, what do you guys have? Or what do you guys think is going to be the trend if you don't, um, if you don't necessarily have a theme for your own? Like, what do you think is going to be the trend this year? Because I find that even though I mean, there's some traditionalists like my mom, <laughs> she's super traditional with her tree, she loves her, you know, red and green and things like that. Um, oops, I think that one is not centered. Let's try to get that better. Oof. All right. So there we go. So yeah, so let me know in the comments, um, you know, what, what do you think the trend is? Or what do you what what's your tree like? Or what's your preferred theme color for, you know, a holiday like that? If you don't celebrate Christmas, like, um, do you do you have a holiday around that time? And if you do, like, what themes do you normally have for that? So, so anyway, so I think that looks pretty cute, too. So yeah, so like I said, it's a little bit different in terms of, I know it's not a typical holiday, but I really like the look. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep going ahead. So let me go into a time lapse and I will get the rest of them done and then we'll talk about what's next. Actually, I wanted to quickly show you a little trick that I have. Um, so I'm really terrible <laughs> when I put on these stickers that sometimes I allow bubbles. Like I'm obviously we should be putting the sticker on one end and kind of squeegeeing out, you know, from the bottom to the top or whatever. Um, but I found that I'm actually really bad at that. So because I'm I'm usually paying way more attention to trying to center. <laughs> this sticker then you know so once I figure I have the, the you know the center of the spot that I want I just kind of slam the sticker down and then I end up with a big bubble kind of like this so one thing I have been doing is I've taken a tool like this that has a you could take a pin that has a sharp point and I just find a spot in the sticker and then I push the air towards the hole so I just kind of poke a hole in it and then see if I can release the air that way and the hole doesn't generally show, so it's been fine. So you saw that bubble was there, and now it's not, it's gone. So, and like I said, the bubble doesn't show, especially when we have these glittery backgrounds, but even on the solid background, it doesn't really show. I have another one here, so I just put a hole. You don't try to make, you don't want the hole to be large, just kind of literally a, you know, a pin prick, and then you can release the bubble from there. So now, it's perfectly flat so yeah like I said it's a bad habit of mine if you're better at squeegeeing out your <laughs> the holes in your sticker then or at least like laying it down properly you don't have to worry about that but if you're like me um, that's a little trick for you so let's continue Okay, so I had the last one here and I wanted to show um, that, you know, this piece was actually attached here. Do you guys see that? It was attached here and I just trimmed it off because when I go to put this on, it's gonna be off the edge. And because these ornaments have like a rounded edge, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to trim off 
the rounded. So I'm trying to trim it before I stick them on. Normally on flat surfaces, I just stick the stickers on and then go through with my exacto knife and trim it off. But the rounded edge is a little bit more tricky. So if you can plan it ahead of time, then trim it off. And let's just get this last one on. Okay, let's grab that. Oh no, I ripped it. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen to one of them. It's actually the first one this has happened with actually, but I, I'm always afraid that that's going to happen. Mm. Okay, I don't think that's going to want to stay with us. Nope. Oh, oh, it did. Oh, I got it. Okay. Now let's see if we can get this on. Very carefully. I'm trying to do it the right way, guys. Okay. There we go. We did it. All right. So as you can see, those are all of our colors. And the cool thing is with the with this is um, if you saw my previous, I did a, another video a couple weeks ago, a couple of videos previous to this one, I guess, where I was testing uh, clear stickers, not these specific ones, but clear stickers on different colors of resin backgrounds, sparkly, non-sparkly, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I found that some do show edges more. Now, this particular tape I found it's almost invisible. Isn't look at that. That's on a blue. And we did find on some of the darker colors in that previous video that the edges on darker colors tend to like more saturated colors tend to show more. But look at that. You pretty much I mean, it's there. If you really look for it, you can see it, but it's almost invisible. Very, very clear. So and the I think because too is this um, this tape is very thin, like it has a backer on it, but the actual sticker part is super thin. So if you're not getting thickness in that clear, um, tape. So now it's actually, you know, really, um, I don't know, going invisible. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of fading into the background. So, and obviously we, as we know from before on any of our glittery ones, we're pretty much you know, not needing to worry about the edges at all. So but look, I love how this one looks too. So nice. So anyway, so that is those ones. Now I do want to show you, oops, I do have a few others I want to show you. So let's move these guys over a bit like so. And I do have a few others. So I did have a red. So we have that one there. And this was a pink, a light pink one that I did earlier which I also like. So put that one there. <laughs> and I did uh, a white one. Now this is like more of a flat white. If you guys can see it. it's a flat white. And actually the sticker on here is not these ones. It's the same design because obviously you can see these two have the same design. This is a clear sticker and this is the non-clear. So that this one is uh, this one here. So uh, if you want, if you wanted to do uh, white background pieces, this one will work. I wanted to test that too. This one will work perfectly fine on kind of more flat white pieces like this. Right. So um, probably not as much on any glittery backgrounds because it's not transparent or pretty much any other color. I think the only one this would work on is white. So, but it does work nicely. So we do have that. And I want to show you one more that I did and that is another white one but it's this design so this is lilac so this is actually another tape that I have that was actually released earlier this year from the washi tape shop and I didn't actually get to make anything with it but I loved it and it was this was actually the one that was released at Easter time like in the spring and it's a long it's a long roll it has a lot of things on it so it has a lot, as you can see. And uh, the great thing, there's so many patterns. I mean, it looks like it might be repeating, but it's actually not. Like as you look at it, there's so many designs. It does repeat, but it's a good while. I uh, Probably more than, a, well, <laughs> in British Canadian terms, it's more probably more than a meter of actual, I think that's what, three and a half feet or something of actual just like non-repetitive designs and you can you know cut them out as you need to and the same thing with the new one there's so many there's a lot of nice designs and I don't know if it's as long as many 
I gotta find it. I'm gonna look at it now. Well, let's look at this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's still not repeating. Eight, nine. Okay, let's look at the first one. It's this one here. Okay. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Is that the first one? No, nope. thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I think that one is it there. So you is that right? Yeah. So I think there was like fifteen flower designs before it started repeating. So like I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot there and I'm going to have to roll it up again later. <laughs> but anyway, so there's a lot. So like I said, and I didn't repeat, I don't think, I mean, I did repeat on the new ones I added, but the ones I just did just now, I picked six different designs. And then like I said, there's more. So yeah, so you can get quite a bit and you can actually layer them. Like if you want to put a couple, you know, make a bigger bouquet and put a couple of them together on a bigger piece, you could totally do that as well. So anyway, so that part's done. Now I, because I've used a lot of glitter in the backgrounds of these, I'm not going to add anything more on top. But if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that normally <laughs> I would be adding more glitter on top and things like that. I'm not going to do it here just because I wanted to um, show you how these look just as they are on the colorful or different backgrounds. And then the, what I'm going to do is I am going to top coat them. You could technically just lay either like spray seal or put a gloss varnish over top, but I am going to go ahead and put a resin top coat on these and I'm going to do a full flood coat. So I'm going to like wrap it around the sides. So in order to do that, I'm going to liquid latex the, uh, the bottoms, let that dry. And uh, for those of you who may not know, this is the liquid latex that I use here. So it's just, you can get it pretty much, especially now with Halloween coming around, you can get it at any of the kind of costume or special effects stores. Uh, some art stores carry them, Amazon sometimes carries it. So you can find not just this brand, there's like many, but this is the one I like. Um, so I literally just take that and I paint the back just around the edges and it goes on white and then it dries clear. I'll show it in a time lapse so you guys can kind of see if you're not familiar. And then it dries clear. Once it's clear, then you can go ahead and pour your resin. Um, and then the resin can be poured over the edges. It can drip along the bottom. And then once cured, uh, once fully you know dried or cured, you can peel the liquid latex off and all the drips will come off with it. So I really like it for that purpose. It makes a uh, flood coating really easy. So I'm going to do that in a time lapse, but I like, so I'll seal that in for, uh, just to kind of, you know, keep that design looking beautiful underneath. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and uh, see how it looks. I do have a surprise at the end of the video to show you some, another way that I've used. Uh, some of these stickers so stay tuned to the end to see that all right i'll see you soon okay so we have our top coats all done and uh, they're looking really pretty but uh, i wanted to show those of you who may not be familiar this is what the back looks like once it has the drips on it from the top coat of resin and you can see there's still the liquid latex on there so all we need to do is basically just kind of pull up the liquid latex and uh, just give me a second here so the one thing about the rounded edges is that sometimes it's a little bit more tricky to kind of it like leaves like I don't know how to explain it so the resin kind of rolls under because of the roundness instead of having kind of like a sharp edge underneath and then I find that the best thing to do like here my resin's been curing probably for about 24 hours so it it's technically just like uh, I'm just peeling it and then bending it backwards and the resin's just breaking along the line um, but if uh, that's not working you can also just use an you know a utility knife or something to kind of just trim it away and that works as well but I might have to do that here because it's kind of wrapped itself all the way around but let's just continue so but it does leave a nice clean backing and so I actually really like using this method with the liquid latex on the back of my pieces it just gives me I find it's 
it's just easier than tape. I find tape sometimes, especially with these odd shapes, is a little bit more difficult. So anyways, let's get rid of all these pieces. There we go. So there we go. And like I said, there is a couple of spots where there is a bit of just kind of an overhang a little bit. So then I just go through, take my utility knife and just kind of trim those away like so. And we're pretty much done. Anyway, so there we go. So I'll get more of it later. But uh, so there, so this one it looks nice and now it has that nice top coat and so it's all shiny and actually a couple other ones so here's our purple love this purple and the sparkle um what else can i show you this one turned out really pretty and this white one here is the uh so this you can see the difference so this is i mean actually there's not much of a difference but this is the clear uh, floral tape and this is the white floral tape and again because it's on a white background it's not really showing any difference they're both equally beautiful so so yeah so if you're using if you're mainly pouring white like a flat white then you don't necessarily need the clear um, stickers you can go with the white stickers and that works really well too so there we go now um, if you want to make them into ornaments it's just a matter of drilling a hole in the top of each piece and um, so I just use a hand drill for that like nothing specific or special just pretty simple stuff so look at that one the sparkle on this one <laughs> incredible so anyway so that's I thought these were really pretty and again I know they're not overly Christmassy but I still think they're super cute so and I did want to show you I mentioned that I was making something else um, so I also made some coasters and I do have sets of these, but just to show you some other colors. So this is that dark emerald, like it's like a dark teal color. It's called uh, Imperial Emerald from Maypring, I believe. But this is, it's actually more kind of like a dark teal. It's, it leans towards green, but it's a beautiful, beautiful color. And then this is just more of a pearl, like we use the flat white here. But this is on a pearl white, so also pretty pretty. And uh, so these are molds from Molds and Shapes, which you guys, have, if you've been watching me, you know. Um, I've used this one before. And this is their new one called Magical. And again, beautiful. Love the shape. Love the edges on these. And if you like the shape but you want to paint the edges, this is how it looks with the gold edging. And this is a red, so similar to our red here, but with this one shows the gold edges. So, and you can actually paint the edges on these as well. If you want to go the extra step, you could actually paint the edges on these as well if you want to give it that edging. I may do that in a couple of these, but I, I actually really like them <laughs> the way they are. But on the coasters, I really like the gold edging. I haven't got around to doing the edging on these guys yet, but I will be adding them. But even without the edging, super pretty right like it really just comes down to your preference so um so yeah so there we go and all right so anyways i hope you guys like this tutorial i hope that you uh, like this style or at least this technique um like i said i was super excited about this new uh roll of tape <laughs> from the washi tape shop super excited with the clear i just feel like it's so flexible i can see you know doing trays and obviously we did some coasters and you know just i think there's a lot of little you know you can make little i guess keychains even like if you want to just use small parts of the flowers or little letter you could actually in those letter molds you could actually do something with that too i just think there's so many possibilities with them and because it's clear um, and it doesn't leave any edging. I mean, if we look at all of the colors that we have here, none of them have any edging on that shows at all. Like, it's just amazing. Like, this was that dark. Did I show the dark blue one? Uh, so this is it now with the top coat. You don't see any edges. So I think they... It's, I just think it's a great product. So if you want to check it out, I have all the links uh, below in the description under the video. And uh, yeah, so... Anyways, I hope you guys, you know, enjoyed the video 
and uh, and I'll see you in the next one. If you're looking for any of my socials, they are again also linked. Look for the beacons link under, sorry, in the description under the, uh, I think it's like right after the kind of little blurb <laughs> about what the video is about. And then right under that is my link for my social. So if you're looking for my Instagram, my website, if you want to buy me a coffee, any of those things, it's right there. So anyway, anyways, guys, thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye.